coming up on Mustang News, see how people are embracing their Hispanic heritage at the Atascadero Tamale Festival. And a new club is working to promote their message of love, empathy, and respect. And this recently opened restaurant may become your new favorite beverage stop. Broadcasting from Swanson Studios, you're watching Mustang News. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's episode of Mustang News. I'm Kate Hardesty. And I'm Natalie Young. Thank you for joining us today. This past Saturday, the city of Atascadero held their fourth annual Tamale Festival. I went to see what this beloved tradition was all about. Since its inaugural celebration in 2016, the Atascadero Tamale Festival has grown into one of the city's biggest events of the year. Free to the public, the event showcased over 30 tamale vendors from all over California that made and sold everything from traditional to gourmet and even sweet tamales. Uh, we own a business in Los Osos. It's called Mex Los Osos Mexico Market. Uh, we have a bakery, deli, uh, meat shops, and stuff like that, groceries. Like every year, vendors also had the opportunity to enter the famous tamale contest where vendors showcase their outstanding work in creating the best tamale. We have to enter, we have to do a certain amount of tamales, and then uh, yes, you know, depends on the clientele, the customers who they buy it, uh, it has the best tamales. Aside from all the fun, the tamale festival also showcased Mexican culture as a whole. Festival goers have the opportunity to watch traditional mariachis, folklorico dancers, and dancing horses. With today's political and social climate, embracing and celebrating culture is more important now than ever. By putting on festivals like this, the public gains insight into the lives and heritage of others they might not have otherwise known about. Natalie Young, Mustang News. After a season of holiday shopping, this new media craze has people clearing their closets with a smile. Netflix released a new show on New Year's Day called Tidying Up with Marie Kondo, and it wasn't long before Kondo's life-changing methods went viral. So like, I was scattered with everything. My desk was, couldn't see the actual desk itself because it had stuff all over it. Um, took me forever to get dressed in the morning because I have way too many clothes. I decided to simplify my life, and through the research I came across the Kamari Method. The Kamari Method is named after Marie Kondo, who is a Japanese organizing consultant who transforms people's homes and lifestyles. The process involves looking at each of your belongings and keeping only the items that bring you joy, and for the items that do not, you thank them for their service. We all have these like sentimental attachments to material items, and she kind of introduced a great way of like these aren't really that important. So, you know, you can get rid of them. Here's how I do it. And then that kind of made it easier for me. This nationwide trend has even reached San Luis Obispo with people sharing success stories on social media, expressing a change in perspective and a more joyous life. As a result, the Kanmari method has thrift stores in San Luis Obispo seeing a stark increase in donations. I mean, we had people the other day, um, I think it was last Friday, um, there was like four or five p people that came in back to back saying they watched that show and dropped off stuff. It was crazy. <laughs> For Mustang News, Leah Castillo. New data released from the university shows more women are graduating from Cal Poly than men. In 2018, men were 7.6% less likely to graduate, an increase from last year's gender gap at 6.8%. The university is aware of the issue and is working towards a solution. So there's sort of, there's the first thing is just sort of the awareness that it's there and then the build of things and academic programs is built around trying to study the different aspects of, of what's, what's going on. As part of Cal Poly's graduation initiative, they have started a group called the Student Success and University Research Group, focused on studying the gap and looking at ways to decrease it. And now over to Sam with the weather. Thanks, Kate. The rain has moved out and the sun is back. Get ready for some warmer temperatures in the slow area. I'll have more after the break. Leah, did you put a new dent in that? This one? No. Were you texting and driving again? Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. <laughs>
awkward on the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, and there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome back. I'm Sam Spitz here with your weather forecast for the day. Today is going to be a warm one. We're going to see a high of 72. It's going to cool off a little bit at night, but it's still going to be nice. So if you're looking to go to farmer's market or walk downtown, you should just bring a light jacket. And we're going to see a low of 41 today, a little bit of wind at 10 miles per hour. Moving into our North County, we're going to see similar temperatures. Paso Robles at 66 degrees. Then we move down. We're going to Santa Margarita. It's going to also be 66 degrees with a low of 35. And then looking at our South County and Extended, we're going to see a little bit of warmer temperatures here. Arroyo Grande, we're going to see 73. Moving into Guadalupe, it'll be 71 with a low of 42. And as we move a little bit further down, it's going to cool off a little bit in Vandenberg at 67.44. Looking at our beaches, it's also going to be beautiful. It's a little colder up in Cayucas, Morro Bay area. As we move back down, Pismo and Avila are the same at 72 degrees and Oceano at 71. Looking at our five day forecast, it's going, we're gonna see temperatures increase throughout the week. Tomorrow is gonna be a high of 74 with a low of 42. As we move into the weekend, we are gonna see those clouds roll in. It's going to be, but the temperatures are still going to be hot, 75 on Saturday, 73 on Sunday, and then we're going to cool down a little bit on Monday at 69 degrees. That's all the weather I have for you. Now over to Kate with sports. After a historic run for, of success for the Cal Poly volleyball team, coach Sam Clawson took a job at UC Berkeley. Jay Serrano has more about the longtime assistant who will be taking over. After rebuilding the Cal Poly volleyball team and leading them to back-to-back -to -back NCAA tournaments, Coach Sam Clawson will be moving on to be the head coach at UC Berkeley next year. Cal Poly's new head coach is Carolyn Walters, Clawson's former assistant coach who has been with the team for 10 years and played a key role in the team's success. And I was fortunate enough that our head coach, Sam, the past few years has let me do so many things um, within my role as an assistant and gave me the flexibility to do as much as I wanted. So this, this Transition will be rather seamless. It already has been. Um, I feel like I have a good grasp on things and I'm very excited for the future. While playing for a new head coach can be a daunting prospect, returning players are excited to work with Walters. Caroline was with us all last season, um, but having her be the head coach, it was, it was so fun and so awesome. And just seeing her take on that like more leadership role was so cool. She just takes it and runs with it. And I have full confidence in her that it's going to be amazing. Walters' approach will not be identical to Carlson's but spectators won't see any major differences between last season's team and this one. We have a good thing going, and I don't think that it's necessary to make many changes from that. Um, we have a great group of kids coming back, a great group of recruits coming in, so it'll just be a blend of all those players where I think we'll see some small changes, and you always try to make changes based on the people that you have, so that will organically change a little bit. Jay Serrano, Mustang News. Coming up for Cal Poly Sports, the Cal Poly women's basketball team will look to pick up their second conference home win against division rival Hawaii. The game will start at 7 p.m. in Mod Athletic Center. Then women's basketball will be on the road on Saturday as they travel to UC Irvine to take on the Anteaters at 2 p.m. More information and live updates can be found at gopoly.com. And the men's basketball team will take on Cal State Fullerton in Mott Athletic Center at 7 p.m. The team will try to break a four-game losing streak and get their first conference win. This week, job recruiters from all over joined Cal Poly students in the Recreation Center for the University's Quarterly Career Fair. Our own Lily Dallow and reporter Hallie Sylvia have the story. We'll, we'll be right back after the break. I just got engaged. When we found out that we were pregnant, we were just elated. We were just sitting there waiting for the pediatrician. She said she won't be taking you in as a client. We are a lesbian couple, but she's just a baby. She's the one you're denying the service to. Stop 
smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. This week, job recruiters from all over joined Cal Poly students in the Recreation Center for the university's quarterly career fair. Our own Lily Dallow and reporter Hallie Sylvia have the story. This Wednesday and Thursday, Cal Poly hosted its annual Winter Career Fair. Students of all years and majors can meet with employers to discuss potential job opportunities. Third-year mechanical engineering major Spencer Hand shared with us his initial reaction to his first trip to the career fair. So I was feeling a little underprepared, uh, like resume-wise, but after going in there and talking to people, it was actually, it was really nice. I, have, I realized that I have a lot to bring to a lot of different companies, so... I'm feeling pretty good. We asked Cal Poly alumni and key Insight recruiter Kenny Schmutz on why he and his company enjoy coming to the Cal Poly Career Fair. Keysight really loves to come here because we we typically get a lot of talent that has just um, worked out really great. So, um, and you know, I went to Cal Poly myself and I actually got recruited to my company through the Career Fair. So I'm kind of coming back full circle here. We wish all Cal Poly students the best of luck in their job search. This is Hallie Silva with Mustang News. Last Thursday, Cal Poly's Unity Club marched to promote their message of love, empathy, and respect. Oh, the march began on Dexter Lawn and eventually made its way to the University Union where students spoke on what it means to stand united as one and support others in the future. The march also marked the start of the Humans of Cal Poly Instagram, which will showcase a student every other day in order to show the diversity on campus. The club will be holding events throughout the quarter to spread unity throughout the campus. This popular drink can be found at stores all over San Luis Obispo, but th is this recently opened restaurant going to trump them all? Mustang News reporter Hannah Glazer went to find out some more. There's a new boba place in town, and it has customers wanting to milk every last drop. Milk in it is a boba and rolled ice cream shop that opened on Foothill Boulevard just last Friday. And though only being open for less than a week, it is already causing quite a boba buzz. I got out of class, was like kind of thirsty. I was like, what, what's good? Not boba shop, milking it. So we went to milking instead. Here's all you have to do to get yourself a fresh cup of tea and tapioca. Pick your tea mixture and what additional add-ons you want from the menu. I went for the Thai milk tea with boba. Next, place your order. Then once your order number is called, you can get your hands on this milk and tea combo. And after tasting it, I, along with other customers, give Milk in It a 10 out of 10. It's super friendly environment. Everyone there is really nice. A really good customer service and uh, overall good experience. Hannah Glazer, Mustang News. I'm Natalie Young. Thank you for joining us today. And I'm Kate Hardesty. Have a great weekend.